let me show you this quick and easy trick with which you can separate the subject, bringing more attention to it and thus creating a more impactful image. If you want, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, if you're just here for the tutorial part of this video, make sure to check the chapters because first we need to do a few other things before we can start with the fun stuff. First off, you can see this raw file has a bit of noise in it because it was shot at ISO 12800. So the first thing we want to do is to get rid of that noise. So let's open up the detail panel and all we need to do is to activate Lightroom's AID noise. For that, click on this checkbox right here. And just like that, the image looks much, much cleaner. Perfect. Now we can take a look at the basic adjustments. Therefore, let's expand the basic panel. What I want to do in here is to just add a little, little bit more global contrast. I'm going to bring down the shadows for that. I'm also going to bring up the whites to push the contrast a little further. Again, just a bit. I don't want to overdo it. I'm always paying close attention to the histogram. You can see there is a little bit of clipping kicking in in the very brightest parts of the bird's feathers. I don't think that's a big deal. I actually quite like this effect, so I'm going to leave it at that point. I'm also going to very gently raise the blacks just to create some softer tones in the darker areas. And that's pretty much it for the global tonal adjustments. But one thing that's bothering me at this point is the white balance. You can see it's a little off with the bird kind of being covered in a blue tone, which I really don't like. So the easiest way to fix that is to use the white balance settings. We're going to bring up the temperature, making this whole shot feel a lot warmer this way. I really want to go for a golden hour look. So I'm going to raise the temperature quite a lot. All right, and then I also think the green tint of this image is a bit too strong. I want to fix that. So I'm going to raise the tint slider. And as I push it like this, you can see those golden tones get a little more intense while those green tones, especially in the background, are a bit reduced this way. So I think that's looking pretty good for the white balance. Then let's bring up the texture, giving everything just a bit more sharpness. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze for a little more contrast. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity, which will add a soft look over everything. All right, I'm not going to touch the vibrance and saturation. I'm going to target specific colors later on. For now, that's it for the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before real quick. Looking much, much better. And that's mostly due to the change to white balance. But of course, we also got rid of the noise issues. So now let me explain how we can separate the subject in a very quick and easy way. For that, of course, we want to use masking. Everything is better with masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel right here. Before I start with the first mask, take a look at this image and you will notice it's kind of split up in two sections. We got a darker background and a brighter foreground. And we want to make use of these areas by making the dark background even darker and the bright foreground even brighter. Now we just need a way to target these areas. And for this image in particular, that's super, super easy because the split within this image is pretty much a straight line. That means we can use a simple linear gradient. I'm going to use this linear gradient and I'm going to target the dark area in the background like this. This is the area which I want to make darker. Of course, at the moment, this linear gradient is overlapping our subject and we really don't want to make the subject darker. We want it to stand out. So we need a way to remove this bird from this linear gradient. And we can do that using the subject tool right here. So let's click on it. And all we need to do in here is to click on select subject. And just like that, we have a perfect mask for the background. Now, all we need to do is to make it darker by dropping the exposure. And instantly you can see how the bird now stands out way more from this dark background. I can further push things by bringing up the contrast. I'm also going to drop the shadows. Let's increase the whites because we do have some brighter particles in within this background, which I really want to keep this bright. So I'm going to just raise the whites. Now let me turn off this mask. That's what we have started with. And that's the image after just applying this one single mask for the background. Everything looks much, much better already. But of course, we can further improve things. 
Now, one more thing I want to do with this background mask. I want to make it a little bit softer and therefore I'm going to use the text just slider right here and I'm going to bring it down a bit. Just blurring the background a little more this way. Now, what I like to do is to stack multiple differently sized masks on top of each other. I'm going to create another linear gradient and I'm going to cover the dark background again. But this time I'm making it a little bit smaller. Maybe something like this. Again, I don't want to affect the subject right here. So I'm going to subtract a subject mask once more just to be safe. Although this linear gradient is not really overlapping the bird at the moment. Again, I just want to be safe here. And then again, all I need to do is to bring down the exposure. And this way, I'm making the very top part of the image a little bit darker, creating some really nice fade effect. Let's do this one more time. I'm using a new linear gradient, make it even smaller this time. So like this. And again, I'm bringing down the exposure just a little bit, adding this gradient going from bright to dark in the background. Now we made the background darker, but we haven't touched the foreground. Let's change that. I'm going to yet again use another linear gradient. And with this linear gradient, I'm trying to cover the blurry bright part of the background without overlapping the subject or these sharper things right here. So pretty much like this. Then all I need to do instead of bringing down the exposure, since we want to make this area brighter, since we're dealing with a bright area already, we're going to bring up the exposure, further increasing the brightness here. So I want this to be rather bright. I'm going with something like this. I can even bring up the blacks. This will not only help make it brighter, but we're also getting rid of some of that yellow saturation, which might be a bit too much at that point. So I think this is looking pretty good. And I'm also going to bring down the texture. I'm going to bring the texture down all the way because right here in the foreground, everything is out of focus. So that's perfect. Again, let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. So looking much, much better with the focus now purely lying on our subject right here in the center. So basically look for tonal ranges in the image that are already there and further improve them by making them either darker or brighter. Now we're still not done with the masking yet. What I want to do is to create a new mask and choose a select subject mask. I want to change the whole subject because I feel like the white balance specifically for this bird right here is still a little off. That means I'm going to slightly bring up the temperature and I'm going to reduce the tint a bit, trying to get a neutral color for this bird. So kind of a pure white for its feathers. Something like this looks pretty good. I also want to push the saturation a bit, just giving it some more color this way. All right, then let me create another select subject mask. This time, however, I only want to target the bird's head. Therefore, let me click on those three dots, go to intersect mask width, and I'm choosing a radial gradient, which I'm going to place just over the head and its beak. So I'm going to place it over its head like this because I want to make this area a little bit brighter. At the moment, it's just too dark. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. Not too much, just like this. Perfect. And I think we're done with the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Now the subject really pops. Beautiful. At this point, let's do a bit of color grading. Then we're almost done editing this image. I'm going to start in the color mixer. And I want to start with the saturation. I want to bring up the green tones because the background looks a little bit too desaturated. And I'm also going to bring up the yellow tones for a more intense foreground. So I think that's looking good. Then one more thing, I want to go into the hue tab here. I feel like the green and the yellow tones could use some change. I'm going to bring up the green hue, which will give us a, a more natural looking green tone because at the moment the greens are a bit too yellow. So like this. Then I'm going to drop the yellow hue because I want to give these tones some more of a orange look. So right around here. 
Then I also want to change the color of its beak because it's a bit too magenta. Therefore, I'm using the red hue slider and I'm going to bring it up a notch just to fix that color. Perfect. Then let's head into the color grading tab. I'm going to use the highlights and only the highlights for this shot here. Let's bring up the hue. Of course, I'm aiming for a golden hour light, so I'm going to use a golden hour tone somewhere around here in the yellow range. And then let's bring up the saturation to add this really nice color to everything. Beautiful. Finally, let's go ahead, open up the calibration tab, just because that's something I do for all my images. Bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation. All right, then as always, the only thing left to do with this sharpening in the details panel, let's open it up, bring down the radius, increase the details all the way. Let's add some masking while holding down the Alt key to nicely target our subject right here. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So I hope this little linear gradient trick will be helpful for your images. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as well. And if you want to support this channel, make sure to like and maybe even subscribe. I hope to see you all next time and thank you so much for watching.